hi, everybody. <laughs> hi there. Welcome back to the CoughCast. Uh, welcome back to Anime FMK. Where we all feel like shit. We all feel like shit this morning. Yeah, yeah I'm sick, he's sick and tired, and you're just overworked. Yeah, I, um, I had to deal with some shit this morning. Uh, I, we'll talk about it after the thing. Sure. Yeah. Uh, guys, so yeah, if, if today's show seems a little off base, then uh, guess what? That's the show you tuned into. What, what the <laughs> fuck's You're new? in the right place. <laughs> yeah. Like, what am I going to tell you? It'll be back to normal next week. No, it won't. Something no. else will be wrong next week. It's fine. Don't it's, worry it's about it. It's how things go. Yeah. Anime FMK where the fire never stops. <laughs> nope. Mm, yeah. I, I need a different thing to start telling people. When people ask me how I've, I've been doing. Oh, right. Yeah. I tell them things are the usual amount of on fire. <laughs> and... <laughs> And I'd say that as like a ha ha joke, and at first people yeah. would like laugh. Ha ha, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, and then we'd talk. And yeah. lately, when I've been doing that, they've been like, "Oh, oh my God, what's wrong?" <laughs> so yeah, something, <laughs> something changed, and my ha ha joke got a little too much truth mixed up in it. I like Tyler's one when he, when you're like, "How are you doing?" And he just said, "Alive." I'm like that's, yeah. I, I should just say that I'm alive. That's that has been my response many a time. <laughs> yeah. I was great yesterday. I went to Six Flags. I rode roller yeah. coasters. Uh, we all we all had brunch together. That was, was real fun. good. It was it was a really good weekend. Good. Yeah, I, I had a great weekend too. I had friends from out of town. Yep, that was nice. Our friends Walter Phoenix and Remix was in town yeah. uh, doing stuff, some secret stuff. Oh my god. So, yeah, that was uh, fun. I yeah. shot shot a sketch with Michael and Phoenix while they were in town. So that's fun. I'll retweet that later. Yep. <clears throat> uh, so we all had fun uh, until Sunday, and then then we had to watch anime. <laughs> oh, that's why you were having such a bad morning. You had to watch anime this morning. I'm so sorry. Actually, yeah. no, I was good. I did all my homework before I went to Six Flags. I watched all my anime. Oh yesterday wow, you morning. did? Yeah. Mm, okay, nice. I, okay, that's impressive. That yeah. is. I mean, I also woke up at ass o'clock in the morning for no goddamn reason. But uh, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go on vacation and change time zones soon and fuck everything up even more. So it'll be good. Oh, no. But you'll be on vacation. That'll be nice. It will be yeah. nice. Yeah, in Portland, Oregon, because that's where everybody goes in February. It'll be nice. <laughs> it will be nice. I hear good things about the hotel. I'm going to see an old friend. Oh, then yeah, you'll, yeah. you'll have fun. I will have fun. Good. Um, I had I had some fun watching yeah. anime. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? Do we have to? We, well, I, Us, in, in you so know, <laughs> technically no, but ostensibly <laughs> yes. No, we are contractually obligated to watch, in this case, Ancient Magus Bride, episode 20, Chise absorbs the imprisoned Dargon's magic and stops it from going berserk, but she also absorbs its curse, which manifests as a freaky monster arm. She now has only months to live. She and Elias have a heart-to-heart -heart and vow to find a way to stay together, which presumably means alive together. Mm. I don't know. Maybe they're going to die together. <sighs> Go to Fairyland together? Yeah. Yeah, could be. Uh, mm. Also, they are visited by Mariel, a witch who says that her coven may be able to help cure Chise if she joins them. Felt like another jam-packed episode this week. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd say all of the big stuff was in kind of that first half, and then all the emotional stuff was in the mm -hmm. second half. Um, I'll open up and say I really liked this one. I felt, yeah. I, yeah. I felt this one was the most compelling one. Like, it reminded me the most of season one. And it felt like it had the most going on in a good way uh, for me. Yeah, we uh, we see kind of a jump start in just how bad Chisei's body is responding mm. to all of the things that she does. She, I mean, this, yeah, because Elias himself said, I knew this was coming, mm -hmm. but I thought I was foolish to think that I could just keep putting it off and putting it off. Yeah, uh, it really added a sense of urgency to that mm. that has been largely missing just because... You know, they, they've said over and over, yeah, they don't live that long. And she's been, you know, coughing up blood, but anime I don't know. Anime disease. Yeah, yeah. It's anime. People cough up blood a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and they never really gave a good sense of, well, how long does she have? Are we talking years? Are we talking like, oh, she's going to live to be 50, you know, shorter than most people, but still a good long time to figure this out. And now it's like, no, she might not. It's winter right now. She, she might not see the other side of spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think putting a physical thing like with the hand really mm -hmm. helped drove it because the the first shot they have with the hand on the dragon was really grotesque yeah that did a lot for me yeah i was not expecting when ruth drags her out of the river for her to have that attached to her that was that's creepy as heck yeah and although i love her response to it yeah right. in, in, in japanese she's like wow 
Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That was, I, I busted up when she was, said that. Wow. <laughs> I think the soundtrack also did a lot of work. There were some real creepy oh, strings, yeah. like really drove home, like, oh man, some serious shit's going on. A lot down. of really good music this episode. Yeah, I actually Stuff I don't think I heard yeah. before now. I really like the sound design in this show. Mm -hmm. They use very specific sound effects that really sell this creepy and sometimes magical feeling. It's 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 good stuff. Um Yeah, and again, we see her we see her and, and I love what Elias says, you're selfish. Requests are never for you, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think that's a very. I, I think that encapsulates what she says all about. She makes a lot of selfish requests, but they're at the behest of other people. They're for other people's benefit than hers. Mm -hmm. And here we see her selfishness in you know in full <laughs> order. And I don't think she realizes that the more she puts her life in danger, the you know the quicker she's going to hasten herself away from Elias. And I think Elias mm -hmm. is angry about that. I think he's upset about that. I think we saw a lot of that in this episode when he storms out and she says, like, he's mad. And everyone else who's known him for longer than she has is like, wait, that was mad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, there, was a, there was a line um, in this episode that really resonated with me when, when he said to her, like, he just says, like, self-sacrifice. You feel like you have to earn the right to be here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man... Shit, I've felt that a lot. That, yeah, that was that, that hit was, home for me. Yeah, that was definitely one of those lines that I wrote down verbatim mm. in my notes. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was because she also mentions earlier. She's like, you know, now I've I've already had like two curses. I don't think a third one would be too bad. You know, just the way she plays it off, um, real negative way. But uh, yeah, something. Speaking of n negative ways to frame things. Uh, Boy, she's really shitting on herself in that in that mm -hmm. uh, calling herself Baca over and over again in that uh, conversation with Elias. Like, oh, I'm so stupid. Can you help this this stupid person find a way to live? Like, mm -hmm. I I don't know. That made me slightly uncomfortable. Like, I was sort of hoping she would have moved past some of that well, by this point. Here, I think it's a way for her, and, and I actually don't think that was her getting so much down on herself, because mm -hmm. she's being honest. She's not incredibly intelligent as, you know, the average person goes. She's not dumb. She's not actually dumb. But she is kind of socially apart from people. Um, she's, she, she's only recently getting friends. And that scene uh, with, uh, what's, her, uh, what's her name? Um, the, the girl, the 12-year-old girl. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. the birthday yeah. Stella, yeah. Yeah, Stella. That's another way of just saying, like, they both have things to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. They're both kind of, like, underdeveloped in different ways. Mm -hmm. So I think that's her saying, because when, when she says to Elias, yeah, you know, there are just parts about, you know, sometimes humans don't understand things about themselves either. And his response is genuinely like, really? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. He's, he's kind of freaked out, like, oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I just assumed that I was fucked up and couldn't understand these things. Now you're telling me you can't explain them to me either? Yeah, yeah. and so I liked that uh, scene. I liked the fact she's like, yeah, I'm kind of a stupid human. Y can you help teach me? And I, th I, I think that's, that's also very Japanese, too. So I think it's less actual, like, the same self-deprecation and more of a just recognizing that, yeah, she has things that she wants to learn from him, too. And, or at least saying that. I think she's known it for a while. Yeah. I don't know. I like maybe you're right. And you're you're right. It it was totally different than previous ways that she's like actually been really shitting on herself. But I I think it's one of those things where you can kind of shit on yourself as a like play it off as a goof or whatever, or oh, yeah, as I, or totally. as like self deprecation. But like in that previous episode when we were talking about like hey words have meaning and did mm -hmm. you really mean that yeah. like i think when you say these things to yourself over and over you can come to believe them mm -hmm. like that that process of repetition can itself become the problem yeah yeah <clears throat> although then again the term you know the japanese word baka mm -hmm. has so many different like it it ultimately is technically an insult, mm -hmm. but there's there's there are legitimately kind of affectionate ways that it's often used. Mm -hmm. um, like it's kind of like dummy. Yeah. Like yeah, that's kind of her way of using it there. So I don't know. I I love that scene though. Personally, I really like that yeah, scene. Yeah. No, um, 
You can again, no, and I hate to be this guy. I can tell where they cut stuff out of the manga. Mm. Oh, like that whole, yeah. that whole conversation with the uh, with the Shanxi mm. uh, vampire. I'm like, mm. yep, that's that was probably an actual conversation that we actually got to read. And here it's just kind of a background to a quick montage to move. Like, w was that just a day? Yeah, yeah, that seemed like, like it. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're fingering your cards. You I hold I'm one just, up there? No, I'm just doing... I'm oh, just okay. fingering my cards, man. <laughs> no, I just I need something. Yeah. Okay, I mean, we don't have to stop the conversation. I'll go ahead and hold up mine. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah this, was a, this was a spectacular episode on a couple of fronts. Great music, great action, great development of Chisei, and we've got a, a real issue here. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the first time in a while I felt like we have a real conflict that needs to be developed, and I'm thinking it's going to come at the cost of Cartophilus' Kartophilus life. Mm, yeah. yeah. This show's awesome. It's, it's really good. It's, 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 it had a little slumps, I think, at the start of the second core here. Yeah. But it's, it's really picked back up now that we're seeing the, the beginning of the third act of this part. It, it's really good. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you brought up Cartophilus. We didn't really didn't really mention him. He shows up uh, at the end as as he's kind of had a tendency of doing these last few episodes. Just like, hey, by the way, I'm still here and uh, mm. shit's still freaky. But yeah, he might as well have said all according to Cake because <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude's got tubes full of cursed arms that look like Chise. Mm -hmm. This was not a random accident, by the way. Yeah, I think he's trying to kill himself. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, because when he, in that, like, dream sequence, he's like, you gotta help me! Mm -hmm. I yeah. could see that, and I could see this running about going there. Yeah, I think I think that's his goal. And I think he's trying to use Chisei to do it. That's really cool. I like that as a villain motivation. That's so neat. Yeah, I, you know, I, <laughs> I like, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Disney villains. I'm also a fan of villains uh, that you sympathize with and understand. I feel like this is both combined into yeah. one, and I kind of dig on it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, although that could, I don't know, we'll see how it plays out. That could go some weird places, because the whole reason why he can't die is he was cursed by Jesus. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that any internally consistent way of undoing that curse would have to bring Christian mythology way more into the front and center than it has ever been in this show. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how I would feel about that if that is the direction that they wind up going. Yeah, yeah, I don't think in the show they've ever mentioned... Did they, they, did they mention Jesus? Yeah. They, they have, yep. well, oh, yeah, that's right. Have yeah. they mentioned Jesus proper, or did they just mention the old, uh, the their, the Christian God? Uh, no, they, they said... Uh, that he was cursed by the Son of God. Oh, okay. Yeah, they yeah, haven't said yeah. the word Jesus, but yeah, it is very mm. clearly. To be completely honest, we've already brought in uh, Celtic religions, Asian religions. Let's do yeah. it. Let's bring in Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, I, and yeah, you're not wrong. Like, but I really like having it as just one mythology on equal footing with everything else. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I would like it as much if that turns out to be the central way that the villain's big thing is resolved. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a little OP. <laughs> a little deus ex machina. Yeah, like, like I really liked how, how uh, when Titania basically bitch slaps Simon, the priest, and mm -hmm. says, yeah, there's no place for followers of that <laughs> foreign god here. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just, it is one system of beliefs. It's, it hasn't been, like, elevated over these older pagan traditions, and I like that. I don't think it will be, uh, because here's the thing. A curse from the son of a god, mm -hmm. I can see being a really, really strong curse. So if that's the, f if, if that's the matter of the fact here, if it's like, yeah, Breaking the curse of a son of a god mm -hmm. is that big of a deal. I, I I can accept that. It doesn't have to mm. just be like the Christian god. It could have been any god, but yeah, it's it's hard to infer anything but him though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I've I've enjoyed this being the more pagan mythology show. I would like it to still be the the wacky wood folk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's all I'm really trying to say. And we don't know which way it's gonna go from here. So I could be entirely yeah. barking up the wrong tree. Just yeah. If that does, like, it, this very much feels like this is going to be the final conflict, at least for the anime. Uh, it, it seems like there is more manga to adapt than they will be able to adapt with the episode count that they have. Oh, there is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Hope I hope so. this doesn't end as some advertisement like all those other shows, man. Well, I think we're going to get a satisfying ending, but mm. we're not... Obviously, since the manga is still going, we're not going to get the ending ending. Yeah. yeah. But... that's It's still been a fun ride. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, uh, Toriyama wanted it to end with episode 12, so... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Toriyama wanted to end with the Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh <laughs> Well, that's a that's a tri fuck for our lovely ancient Magus bride. Great. Great. That was like halfway through our through our conversation about this episode. Now I'm going to have to find that on the time. <laughs> Has have any have we ever killed any of this? I th- I, at all? I don't think so. I think this has always gotten a tri fuck. We also did start with the first three episodes all in a chunk, and that's when we were feeling yeah, uncertain exa- yeah. about it. If yeah, it it might have gotten a stray kill if we'd done those one at a time. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I could have imagined at least one knife if we'd actually done it <sighs> oh, episode I, to episode. I would have uh, by episode two for sure. Yeah, yeah. I remember you especially were feeling iffy about it that first week. And, yeah, but I don't know. Who's to say cool. what happened in that in that tangent timeline where we did things differently that first season? In this timeline, we're still watching A Place Further Than the Universe Woo! as of episode 8, in which the penguin manju sets off. The girls must adjust to life aboard ship, including a rigorous schedule of chores, physical training, bathing in seawater, and crippling seasickness. This felt like another, like... Real table setting, like, hey, let's see what daily life is like here. That's why my plot synopsis was so brief. Yeah. Uh, that's not to say that I want to give this short shrift, because I thought this was a really solid episode. I really yeah. like this. No, this, I like seeing them. Uh, I was I, I was talking with Gavin last night, and he's like, I just love learning about how people deal with mm-hmm. these situations, how people live on a boat. Yeah. They have to run around the boat to keep themselves active and keep their stamina up. They've got to, uh, you know... Learn how like learn what their all their parts are on the ship and 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 learn their shifts and it's it's good stuff. I'm I'm all about that. It's my favorite part of stories, which is why you'll hear the common uh, write what you know as the typical writing advice. Because yeah. learning about stuff like this from someone who knows what they're talking about is so cool as a viewer who who I don't know anything about how this stuff works. Please teach me and have some goofy antics along the way. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah. like I. I was down with the whole, like, hey, let's take a second here. Let's do a scientific PowerPoint presentation and talk about ocean currents and how yeah, that shit Yeah, I thought works. that was cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, there's nothing that I love more than telling us, than learning about something, about, learning about the world and details in the world, like these different jobs and, and, and parts, you know, parts that matter, but specifically to the characters, something that affects them directly. They have to know these things. So not only is it pushing the plot forward, but we're also learning some things. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really fun. I, I enjoy that. And not to mention, these are the best four characters to do it with. Yeah. They're, they, you, they've all got very different personalities, so you get different reactions, different questions mm. from each of them regarding these topics. And I just love the fact that none of them know how to peel a potato. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the adults in the expedition really seem to have kind of thrown these girls into the deep end to let them sink or swim. Because mm-hmm. like there are things like, oh, by the way, you gotta strap those boxes down in your quarters, or else they're gonna go flipping around everywhere. They didn't bother to tell them that until they were at sea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like seems like some of this stuff could have been covered in the introductory pamphlet. But yeah, <laughs> well, here's the thing: they're short on people. They're yeah. short on people. Mm-hmm. They're short on time. They're short on management. So at the end of the day, they're yeah they probably could have told them, but I understand why they didn't tell them. They were too busy. The and the fact that they have these four other girls that are not their business, mm. like yeah they're on there because this one girl uh, is helping them get a, bring awareness. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, yeah they don't have time for that. <laughs> Nobody got time for four high school girls on a boat to Antarctica. Here, here's a question. I don't know if there's a good answer for it. Peeling potatoes. Yeah. This is a thing, like, you see this in, in, like, military movies as, like, the punishment. You're peeling potatoes, son! Mm, yeah. Is there a reason to peel a potato ever? Yes. Why? What, why do you peel the potato? When you're, uh, when you're cooking them to be prepared in stew, um, you don't want the... Oh, yeah. yeah. you do not want the skin in there. 
You don't? No. No. I always eat my potato skin on. Yeah, do you, I, eat, would you eat them in your stew with the skin on? Yeah. Oh, well, then you're very different than most people. Mm. Usually it affects the actual taste of the broth and the, uh, and the potato itself. Personally, I like skins on my potatoes. Yeah. It's actually the more nutritious part of it. It's got fiber. It's supposed mm-hmm. to be good for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, by and large, you yeah. when you're preparing it for stew and other dishes that require potatoes, you don't want the skin on them. Nope. Hmm. Uh, I I was curious. I always assumed in those military movies that that was unintentionally like useless work as punishment. <laughs> oh, okay. And that's I why see, it, yeah. that's why it confused me here. I'm like, but nobody's got t- nobody does have time for useless work here. But okay, apparently there is a a reason behind it. Yeah, yeah. No. it might just it might be a cultural thing too. That's just how they need them prepared. How how they like them prepared. So yeah, I can see that. It's. I don't know. Uh, I I always peeled potatoes before my parents would cook. Yeah, I've seen it a few times. I mean, I've seen it done. I just, I, that's one of those shortcuts as I have taught myself to cook as an adult. (laughs) You know what? I like the skin on these potatoes. Also, it saves a whole lot of time. I'm just going to leave the skin on these potatoes. Hey, you know, (laughs) although mashed potatoes with that, that's a, that's a little different. It's hard to mash a potato with the skin on. It actually. Oh, but with the difficult. skins in there, oh, though, yeah. it's oh, yeah. so good. Yeah. It, it, but to be fair, I actually do enjoy mashed yeah, potatoes with great. the skin in them. So yeah, yeah. no, you just <laughs> dice it. So you you, you got yeah. these little squares of skin, and then sometimes you get that real skinny bite. Yeah, mm, yeah, it's, it's good. a good bite. Fuck, so, I'm hungry. Yeah. So uh, place <laughs> further than the universe. Um, also, uh, there is there is one thing. Um, I felt like the episode was a little. Uh, how do I put this? Too good. <laughs> uh, a little, um, what's the term? Artificially lengthened in, in a way. Because it's like, yeah, they keep vomiting. Yeah, they've yeah. got seasickness. And, like, I understand. And, and here's the thing. I don't want to rush to Antarctica. I like these sorts of episodes. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, okay, we get it. They're, they're dealing with the seasickness, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm also hoping that they actually, like, are able to do what they're supposed to do when they're out there. I'm I, I'm concerned for them. So, I I didn't think it was a problem. I, what I like is I like seeing them in a, do, how they handle situations that I can relate to. Yeah. Um. Because like for uh, I watched it with my girlfriend. She had she's only seen like two episodes, and she was like, "This is really good." Like the right. She was like, "The writing for these characters is so relatable." Like mm-hmm. I can understand that. As someone who's had seasickness, seeing them deal with this makes them more like I get a bigger connection with them, and that's more important to me. So I, I, I dig that. I get why you're concerned, though. Yeah, I, I think maybe if there had been even just one of them that didn't get hit so hard with seasickness, but maybe that is just a universal thing when you're dealing with that much waves. Because I know some people, some people get it worse than others, and here it seemed pretty uniform among the four of them. Uh, funny enough, uh, if I remember correctly, the Japanese are more prone to it. Oh. Yeah, it's hmm. it's actually, um, it's also one of the reasons first-person shooters are not as popular. Uh, it makes them, it gives them motion sickness. Oh. Yeah. I feel like I've heard that somewhere. Yeah, somewhere it, was, it was one of the reasons the Xbox did it, uh. one of the reasons the Xbox did <laughs> Yeah. Really. Um, besides the gigantic controllers and the gigantic console that didn't fit in living rooms, in living rooms <laughs> very well. Yeah, it primarily was like, Halo. Halo, Halo, Halo. Yeah, and then yeah. the Japanese were like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I get you. So, yeah, I, I, I can, I, it makes sense that these four high school girls from Japan are probably just going onto this boat and the next thing you know, vomit everywhere. Yeah, but, but yeah, no, I, I think I agree with Kieran on this one. Like, I get your point that it was, it did feel a little elongated, but I think that was kind of necessary for the seasickness to not just be something that they just sort of shrugged and got over the next day. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think seeing that it was an extended problem that they had to overcome was was kind of necessary. But I, what I like seeing in the show is there's consistently these problems that happen. Like, it, it's kind of formulaic, at least the past, like, three or so. Mm-hmm. Something happens, and in about the last five minutes, um, the first two minutes of the last five minutes will be, we gotta shape up, we gotta do something, we gotta do X, Y, Z, motivation, we're 16, 17, we can do it. And I kind of like seeing the setup for them to have to overcome that. Uh, because it is part of the show's charm for me. I'm okay with uh, a problem being extrapolated if it means I get to see them try that much harder to overcome it. Because it just has a bit more weight, I think. Also, um, did anybody get a little bit scared when they opened the door? Yeah, I was sitting there like, that is a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the railing is high. 
So, like, by and large, it, 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 they, they're not in too much danger if they're keeping a tight hold. But it's still really crazy to see them going out in the middle of the night with these huge waves. Yeah, well, and while they're all weak from, felt like, a, at that point, like, three to four days of constant <laughs> seasickness. Yeah. yeah. It, it, felt, it felt a little perilous. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe we could go out and, and face the peril. Together, because we're all high schoolers. I, can we hold up cards together? Yeah. This show's great. It's really good. I'm glad Tyler added it in. Yep. It makes me happy when I watch it. Yeah, I, I won't lie to you. I was really, really sad when this season, uh, when, you know, our poll didn't include this. So, again, Tyler, thank you so much, because this may be, like, I can probably already say it's my favorite show of the season. It's very strong. I really like it. I don't know if it's my favorite yet, but it doesn't need to be my favorite. It just needs to be real good, and it is. I like it. That's a try fuck. Three big beautiful eggplants. Fuck. I shouldn't have gotten the cheap tablet. But it's not so bad as to make me buy a new one. Ben, uh, what's next? Junji Ito collection. Okay, good, because I just realized something. What? I didn't watch Hakame and Mikochi. <laughs> I just realized that. <laughs> I just now realized I didn't watch it. I don't know how. That didn't happen. <laughs> but I didn't watch it. So there we go. I was like, yeah, that show's really good. Hakame and Mikochi's pretty alright. Did I? <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that counts as a de facto knife from Kieran. He didn't care enough to watch it. Let's say that. <laughs> Let's say that. Oh my. Let's say that's a de facto knife. Because I was like, is there any other show that was really good? Hakame Makochi was pretty good for a bit. I liked it, and then it got a little boring. Because there was that one episode, and then there was that... What was that after episode after that? Because we talked about that one. <laughs> and I I complete man. Oh, you know because High Dive doesn't have a Chromecast thing. It's uh, totally spaced yeah. on it. And <laughs> honestly, this is why this is one reason why I usually go through the list in order is so that I don't forget anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have the list in order. I have my crunch my VRV mm. Crunchyroll like Q thing. I'm yeah. like, and then we go to Amazon for Killing Bites and Coca Coo. Yeah. Well. Uh, well. Oh, That's a knife. Did you, oh, did I you guess. Not, did you not watch Kokoku this week? Oh no, I didn't. Good, because it's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Man, let me tell you, the like not having to watch Kokoku, I kind of missed Ramen's a little bit. I was like, huh, well, I guess we'll never really see where that goes. Kokoku, I was like, bye. <laughs> Later, baby. Yeah. Well, let's uh Yeah, let's talk about Junji Ito. That yep. is here. That Junji is Ito, episode eight, in part one. Amnesia Girl's boyfriend is from a family where everyone wears the skulls of their ancestors like a hat, forming a giant caterpillar made of skulls. Then they get married. So, you know, happy ending, I guess. Uh, <laughs> in part two, there's a circus where all the performers die trying to win the heart of the trapeze artist, and the ringmaster is the devil, I guess. The end. This episode sucked. This, this episode is, sucked. This yeah. episode is a bad episode. This is a bad episode. Look Top at, to bottom sucked ass. That art and animation, this was, right. holy yeah. crap, this is the worst looking show all season. Like. And I mean like all season. This, man. Man, dude. Oh man. It was atrocious. Yeah. Like the, I, the Honored Ancestors one, I, I, I think, I, I feel like I saw at least screenshots of like the, the head caterpillar mm. uh, before, but I was like, oh yeah, that thing. Why does she look different in every shot? Oh my god, do you see her running? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, production value wise, this was a pretty clear low point, and this is a, a, a show that's, that's had its ups and downs yeah. to begin with. Yeah, they haven't, none of the episodes have looked this bad. And I'm the guy who doesn't like this show, and I'm like, yeah, no, this was actually way, all the other episodes were fucking madhouse by comparison. Yeah. Yeah. This is some, this is like the worst of Studio Dean at full front. It's it, like, Jesus, man. It really is. Like, people in the background are just, you know, the dots with the line. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh my god, the circus scene, the opening. Oh my god. Yeah, oh, with the clowns. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And they man. just like there's no animation. There's d d one after the other running in. And I feel like and the worst part is so okay, I recently watched Death Parade. 
Um, and that's a, that's another Madhouse show. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like they could have, like, the whole segment, that whole circus segment could have been so good if, with the right angles, with the right animation, with the right, you know, with the right uh, actual uh, storyboarding. But here it's all just, nope, guy's dying, die, dies, dies, knife, comes down, just whatever. This is not a good, not a good episode, man. Yeah. Part one at least had a somewhat interesting idea behind it. The execution was kind of shit. Like, and that's the only thing you're watching for with this is the execution. Yeah, because again, uh, yeah, and I don't know. I I'm always so back and forth on this show because on the one hand, the fact that everybody's that everybody's crazy is sort of part of the appeal, but mm -hmm. I need to have a character who's who's a normal human. Or mm -hmm. else it's just yeah. all craziness, and why do I care? Uh, yeah. And, and, and for the part of part one where where the dad was the crazy one and the mm -hmm. boy and girl were pretty normal, then, like, I could have that. I could have that in. And then when the boy started acting crazy, too, it's like, ooh, you're losing me. And then the girl just kind of goes crazy at the end, and that's the end is she goes crazy, too. I mean, I don't necessarily mind that. I like this whole descent into madness angle. It it, it feels very uh, it it feels very. I have no mouth, but I must scream. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, the actual execution is so bad. The story just completely falls apart. And I don't that, have anything nice to say about this episode. Yeah, like, then, at all. And then there's part two, which is just circuses are creepy. Here's a creepy circus with the dumbest audience ever to live. Yeah. And and guys, we've seen if you want creepy circuses, fiction is replete with creepy yeah. circuses. And that was what a bad one to pick. Like, I thought that was a real weak story. Maybe I may probably would have hated the manga of that too. Maybe they did that because they didn't have the budget. Like they just didn't have the time or the people this week. Mm -hmm. So they were like, all right, let's get the weakest possible stories we can to throw our worst like our like this. Maybe the next one's beautiful. Maybe the next one's great. Don't but, tell me that. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I mean, y'all y'all yeah. knew this was coming. You you've, you've been knifing the best episodes, let alone <laughs> this one. Yeah. <laughs> so, boom. Kieran, show me a card. The only reason I'm watching is because I want to see a few shorts that I still know and they haven't done. Mm. And I don't think they're going to do them that well at least if this is any indicator they've done some really solid ones um but i was like oh i hope they do amigahara fault everybody loves that one that was really cool it's probably gonna look like butt and be just passable i i find my like after last week man it was really good i really liked it but this just looked like absolute ass. It was real shitty pulls to to adapt. Early Honorable Ancestors is fine, but what a terrible execution. Believe it or not, the, the first part I found frustrating because I thought it had an interesting enough idea and then fucked it up. Mm -hmm. The second part was so bad it was laughable and I was having Ooh, fun. Oh, okay. Yeah, I so, can do that. So I'm, I would actually give this one a fuck. Okay. But it's probably not going to be enough to save it. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a, that is a double kill for Junji Ito collection. Damn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. I was in your corner for a while. Sorry, man. Yeah. Well, Scott, I guess it's you and me. Let's talk about Tiny Life in the Woods, Hakame and Makochi. Uh, in episode seven, in part one, it turns out there's a whole neighborhood living in the branches of Hakame and Makochi's tree that they just kind of never noticed before. So that's weird. Uh, in part two, one of their neighbors, a beetle, buys new furniture that turns out to be kind of shitty. And in part three, there's a traveling bunny photographer. Not a bunny. Not a bunny. No. Uh, okay. I had this conversation last night. It's actually a kangaroo rat. Okay. Yeah. Uh, looks very similar, but I was like, that's too small to be a bunny. And then I saw the tail. I'm like, oh, kangaroo rat. That's oh, okay. cool. Kangaroo rat then. Yeah. They're super cute. And so is this character. But. Yeah. I did not care for part three. I didn't care for, okay, so you kind of made part one and part two. I guess they were definitely two parts. Yeah. But I kind of roped it all into one part because it had one central character. Yeah. I didn't like part one. I loved part three. Yeah, yeah. Part 
part one was just kind of there, like not much happened. Um, well, it, uh, it introduced some cute characters. Actually, no, I take that back. It introduced a cute character, the Beetle. I don't like the Beetle. I thought the Beetle was dumb. I like I I, I liked her better as a one-off character, mm -hmm. but then we had her story. Her story was lame, and like I I felt like if it had been. I don't know the idea that she wanted to be metropolitan. This mm -hmm. concept of oh, she came from a she, you know from another a, another place. She moved into more of a city, which is not even that much of a city, but it's definitely a lot more than what she came from. Mm -hmm. And that she wants to live this metropolitan lifestyle. The the entire uh, thread of the plot, the, the entire point of the plot was this message of hey, don't try and be a person that you're not. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just buy things because you want them in your life. Buy them because they're of actual essential use to you. Um, and try them out of, and, and, and find a middle ground between them. If there's something that you, you know you really like that aesthetic, really make it yours, and don't just go with the first thing you see. That's 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 kind of the overarching moral with that story. But man, that bug was more annoying to me than it was actually like I I, I didn't like her. I, I thought she was I thought she was better as just that one character we get introduced to in the beginning. It was that was funny and cute. And the next thing we know, oh, she's actually the star of this episode. Oh no. Uh, so I don't know. I think I think maybe just the just the novelty of this like non anthropomorphized, totally like drawn like a beetle ass beetle <laughs> with a little bow talking like this. Hello, I'm a beetle. I don't know. I I think that was it. Was also pretty short, so that was enough to carry me through. Uh, but yeah, part one, nothing happened, and the concept is. Silly to begin with, and not in a fun way. Oh, turns out that the little necromancer, when when they rebuilt the house, they also made a whole bunch more houses up there. Do we not look up ever? Well, uh, you see, I bet that works way better as a comic. Because you kind of leave from it, and then you come back. Yeah. And that's kind of the funny... I think that's supposed to be funnier than anything. Like, oh yeah, we kind of never really saw that there are other people living uh, above us. And they've just gone exploring. Like, we don't know what the time frame for this is. We don't know how long it's been. So for me, it didn't bother me too much. Um, it, it did make me tilt my head, though. I, I'll admit, like, huh, yeah, it's kind of weird that there's just more people living above them. Yeah, I mean, in a different sort of show, that would be a funny idea. But in this show, where so much of the appeal is, let's see how these little people's lives work. Like keeping it as grounded and realistic as possible is kind of key, and when you when you let that slip, I think if, that's kind of a problem. If it had been the if this had been literally the episode immediately after, I think it would have been fine. Yes, agreed. Yeah, I, it, uh, but the fact that it has been like three episodes, mm -hmm. like ostensibly weeks have gone by. Yeah. Um, she they do mention like, hey, look, it's another it, it's another mysterious door. Mm -hmm. And she's like, why do we keep finding these? Yeah. So see, I guess it's something that they they, they do try to um, retroactively like say like, oh, yeah, that's been happening. We just haven't talked about it. But yeah, that's like the kind of dream logic that I'd expect out of a Junji Ito episode. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little awkward, but it did make I thought it made for some decent jokes again. I like I loved the joke with the beetle. I liked it when it happened. I just didn't like her having her own segment. That's all. But yeah. also, uh, but I do gotta agree. She's hilarious and she is kind of adorable in that odd way of like, oh hi, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to make a home here. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you sweet little thing. <laughs> um, but yeah. And then yeah, by part three, I gotta be honest, I was kind of nodding off. Like, see, I thought I thought part three was the best. I mean, I don't know. It was fine, but we talk about this show wearing thin, and by that point, I'm like, you know, I, I think this show being 22 minutes might be a disservice. I think my appetite for this sort of cuteness might be better served in, like, 10-minute chunks. Uh, maybe. I mean, so we talk about anthology, mm -hmm. and that's almost what this is. Like, because yeah. every episode, like, every episode, I've gotten at least one story that I really like. Mm -hmm. And the other stuff, I'm like, okay, we're retreading some ground. That's fine. Yeah. That's the cool thing. Like, I'm, I'm still finding stuff here that I really like. Um, and I, I'm surprised you didn't like the last part. I love the idea of learning about this photographer that talks about her craft. Like, yeah, I spent a bunch of time with these people with the camera out before they got comfortable enough for me to actually start taking the pictures. 
that's that's interesting to me. I like learning about that, and I like the fact that they try to be comfortable around her, and then they instantly like Mikochi thinks like, oh yeah, no, I'll just go about my day and I'll be fine. Nope. She starts looking back at the camera, and I love her. I love, uh, I love what the camera, um, like what the cameraman says. She's like, "Oh, hey, thanks for the look at the camera." And it's like, "Oh, sorry." And, and then when Hakame comes out and starts, you know, using the whetstone in that outfit, I was like, "That's that's great." I love Hakame dressed up like an actual. Um, oh, what, what would you call that? I'm not sure what the I have no idea. Yeah, I'm not not sure what the name for that is, but dresses up in the full outfit and starts, you know, using the whetstone. And then Mikochi calls her out like, "Yeah, no, that's what what are you doing? When you stop that?" I, I I don't know. I thought that was really cute. And again, I I really liked the actual cameraman. I thought she was like the cutest thing in the show. So, I don't know. I I like that I like that I like the first segment. I like the third segment. I didn't like the second segment all that much. Yeah. Except for Hakume being like, by the way, don't buy this furniture. It's bullshit. Yeah. Like Hakume using her like her knowledge anytime. Throw that at me. I'm I'm all about Hakume being being on point. So Yeah. So I don't know. That's um Well, I, I think that's about this episode. Hold up a card for us, Scott. Uh, I, I, I actually liked this episode about as much as I did the last one, and I still really enjoy that one. Um, it's interesting to see things that just aren't working for me, because in, in other episodes there were things that just were more forgettable than working against it. But yeah, I didn't like the second part of this, and yeah, that first part did not make a whole lot of sense. Mm. But I also found it very funny, and that third segment won me over. So, and. And again, even this, if this were a bad episode, it's got a lot going for it already. So, so this, this show has given me lots of stuff that I've really liked. I hope that it gives me more of that in the future, but that's been the exception more than the rule. Like, when it comes to this stuff that's just kind of bl cute and inoffensive, but kind of bland, that's most of what this show is. So I'm going to hold up a knife. Like, if somebody, like, the way I'm looking at this is, like, much in the same way as Junji Ito, if somebody were to come to me and tell me, or, like, Kino's Journey, if somebody were to come to me and tell me, these are, like, these are the good episodes. Go watch those episodes. I could see myself doing that, but, uh, you know, I always try to think, if I were watching this for my own enjoyment, would I have stopped by now? And yeah, I kind of would have. So... If we're counting this as a de facto, unless we want to, like, stop and watch the episode and come back here. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. What you're saying right mm -hmm. now is what I felt last week. Mm -hmm. I, so I don't know. I feel bad because that makes it tied with Junji Ito, and I don't mm -hmm. like that. I don't like that. And, like, that's, that's the thing. I'm kind of like, if I look at both of them... I kind of feel the same way. Like, I don't, like, really want either of them to die, but I don't really care if they do or not either. I have an idea. Okay. This isn't going up till tomorrow, is it? Or, or, or at the earliest. Uh, at the earliest. Tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, it could be going up Wednesday. Yeah. So, what you're going to do mm. is you're going to watch the episode. Okay. You're going to tell me whether you think it's a knife or a fuck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then it's going here. Yeah, no, that's fair. Okay. All right. So, so if it if it is a knife, then I guess we'll announce like a poll with that. Yes, yeah. we will. Okay. All right. Although we don't know how Pop Team Epic's going to shake. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, that, if I mean, Pop, that's true. Yeah. That's true. So yeah. It, so yeah. I mean, it could be a. Well, I mean, we. This we'll, could this could very well. There could already uh, very well be a poll happening. Uh, all right. Or. Oh man. Yeah. Who knows? Let's, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. I noticed that that at no point did you say, and we don't know how killing bites is gonna go, because <laughs> I think we sort of do. <laughs> but that is what's next on the list. That uh, is what's next on the list. But <laughs> come on. In episode seven, Hootie Man punches a hole through Crocodile's head without even transform. Damn! Gorilla attacks Hippo, but Hippo escapes through a rabbit hole. Gecko escapes from Cheetah and Hitomi Badger, but is killed by Tiger. Cheetah and Hitomi Badger square off to fight, but start fucking instead. Due to a pheromone attack released by, is it Civet? Civet. Civet. 
Hitomi Badger snaps out of it by thinking about how bad she wants Shido's dick and attacks Civet, but Tiger arrives and intervenes. You can tell how much I love this show by the fact that none of this plot matters, <laughs> but I get it like so many of these shows. I I'm know, like, you yeah, got a lot of it. Here's the broad strokes. I don't know what, I didn't know what to include here. I'm like, no, here's <laughs> all of it because it all matters because it's all dumb. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say this like flat out. This is got to be one of the, like, maybe the lutest I'm going to get here. That scene was really hot. <laughs> that scene was, was really stupid hot. I, yeah, watching that uh, with the girlfriend, <laughs> we, we had a, we were just like, man, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so I am I am like a 5.9 on the Kinsey scale. I, <laughs> I've been with girls, it didn't work out. <laughs> but, oh, bro, there's something about the sound design, about the storyboarding, about oh every, everything that goes into that scene that I'm like, damn, they're going for it. They're, they're going broadcasting at it. Broadcasting they... it, it's in the middle of the street, they're just dirty animals. <laughs> like, here's the, here's the thing. I'll if if you don't if we don't mind a little TMI here, I'll watch some porn of some shit that I wouldn't do in real life. I think it's okay for you as a gay man to enjoy this. I don't think that I don't think that harms your your identity there. Yeah, because this show is all about sex, violence, mm -hmm. and rock and roll. And you, we got a lot of that. Like the guitar was heavy in this episode. As soon as she's like, "No, I'm not coming with you." <laughs> 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 That's so yeah. great. so it, it was it was amazing that that scene starts and then they just again they just go at oh, it it oh. is all and it just keeps going I know cuz I was like cuz they set it up like they're face to face they're like we got to finish what we started yeah they inch closer and closer and I'm like and then they fuck yep. I say out yep. loud jokingly and then they do because yep. killing bites is the best yep <laughs> And you know what? And they, you know they had their their little explanation. Oh, it was magic pheromones making them do it. Sure. I would have enjoyed that just as much without <laughs> that. <laughs> oh yeah. To, to be quite honest with you, but the the whole civet rat thing. I know it's so dumb. Kind of adds this extra element of like I'm not telling them to do anything they probably wouldn't have done anyway. I just turned that up to eleven. <laughs> and yeah, they they go at it and the civet. By the way, the civet being there, like she's cool. I'm like, oh yeah, ah, neat. You're like you're kind of like this hypnosis chick. You know. You've got your own way of doing this, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, other other dumb fun stuff. Boom! Hold your head. I deal know. with it. They're punching through his fucking head, man. Yeah. Just fucking took out Crocodile with a single punch. By the yeah. way, this wall of fucking meat here. <laughs> like, yeah, this guy. This guy reminds me of Scar from Full Metal Alchemist. Only oh like, yeah. Yeah. So, you, I, he's the fucking Lorax too, by the way. That's all he oh, is. Yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. Just he speaks for the trees, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, you killed the trees. Bam, bam, bam. It's the Lorax. It's it's Android sixteen yeah. <laughs> yeah. mixed with Scar from Full Metal Alchemist in a goddamn hoodie. So so theories. What kind of animal do y'all think he is? I have no clue. Um, because mm. I've I've got two theories. Oh yeah. Okay, give yeah. me some. I, I can bounce off. Maybe. Okay. So the the first thing I said, and I don't think this is right, but I want it to be true because the the announcer says that he's oh a dark horse enters the ring. I want him mm. to be a literal horse. Yeah. Because in Soviet Russia, horse beats a dead you. <laughs> <laughs> So uh -huh. it'd be a double pun there, and you know that's what I'm all about. But my girlfriend—you like up, double penetration? I do. <laughs> but my girlfriend brought a theory, which is probably actually correct. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, uh, she thinks he might be an elephant because elephants will a they will trample dead things like mm, just like okay. they'll get pissed and just keep on trampling it after it's dead. Also, apparently, if they like see a tree that's been knocked over, they'll like try and put it back up. That's Ooh. a behavior that's been observed. So that, like, okay. I did not have that animal science knowledge. But after she explained that to me, I'm like, yeah, that's probably what it I actually is. I can't wait is. to see his trunk. Dude, <laughs> yeah. that makes a lot of sense because by and large, uh, pachyderms mm -hmm. are frightening. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. And, and an elephant is just the, an elephant can't be taken down by any single animal. It's, yeah. it's damn near impossible. There's, there's barely an animal in the animal kingdom that can take down a full grown elephant without you know injuring it with a pack they it's it's crazy so the idea that this guy's an elephant yeah i'm way on board with that and i want that to be the case yeah i think elephants pretty high on the probably, elephants i think have the highest power level of any land animal 
<laughs> um, I don't know. We, we'd have to measure it against uh, against a few other things, maybe. I feel like an orangutan could do some damage against an elephant. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see. The guy that turns, by the way, the guy that turns into the gorilla, like, with just, his body doesn't change, just his yep. arms. It makes me so happy. I'm yeah. wondering if he can change everything, or if he just focuses all of his, like, all of his transformation under the arms, because that's all he needs. We've only seen, like, the, the reptile dudes show, like, a, a level two transformation. I'm wondering if other people have that. Well, yeah, well people have partial transformations. Yeah, 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 that was a plot point early on, so I, I think we can just can assume that there is, until they get to full-on animal person, mm -hmm. like, they're probably only using part of their full power level. We have probably not seen their true form. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I want to see Tiger's true form. You want to see his transform penis. I, I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> also, it was really good to see that my uh, theory about Rabbit came true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, yeah. In fact she did have a role to play here. And I was like, yeah, yeah I knew the manga cop wasn't just going to have Rabbit be there for literally no reason. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you said that last week, I'm like, yeah, he's he's almost certainly right. And you mm -hmm. were. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I do love the fact that I was like, you just want to fucking dig more. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. yep. And oh god, okay, I'm sorry. The scene where she pops up and it, it, yeah. the, the music stops, the, all the sound stops. <laughs> really just looks at her. They both smile at each other. <laughs> yeah, I, I turned, and like as the episode was ending, I just turned to my girlfriend and I'm smiling. And I'm like, th I never am sad watching this show. I yep. always have a smile on my face because something, something's happening, and it's dumb, yeah. fun, or a mix of the two. And the show knows how to deal with that and itself in all the best ways. I mean, what else do you want? It's, oh, yeah. Gonna, got, it's got me in that civet rap. <laughs> it's, got me in that civet rap. <laughs> it's, it's so good. Yeah, the, the worst episode of this show I am still enjoying, and this was far from the worst. In fact, this might be runner-up for the best after Let's Get Real last week. <laughs> yeah. Man. Can't you can't beat the Cobra Cannons? Cannot no. beat the Cobra Cannons, <laughs> even with the Death Mace. Uh, oh God! Like I love all the attack names. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And, uh, uh, this show's so good. It's so great. stupid. Yeah. yeah, love it. So, so yeah. Like as silly as it is, when you say a place further than the universe might be, you know, close to your favorite. Like this might be. I would not try to make an argument for this as the best show this might be my favorite show i'll make an argument this right. season. oh yeah no there's there's a night there's a good steak and then there's an in and out double double like animal style you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah 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 we've we've gotten we've gotten some good double doubles out of this show you know what i'm talking about <laughs> well we just got a triple so way to go yep good stuff all right let's talk about let me just just mark that down in case i forget <laughs> you should forget that it's still amazing. <laughs> Let's talk about Pop Team Epic. Pop it's Epic Pico. In episode eight, drugs and Yakuza. So, um, I actually talked with a friend who'd seen the movie that, that was a parody of. Oh, uh, really? A Battle Without Honor hum and Humanity, which <laughs> the song from Kill Bill is based off of. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, um, I think that song might be from that movie. I'm not 100% sure, but... Yeah, that uh, that sure was a parody of that movie that I've never seen, and I guess had a bunch of jokes in there. Yeah, like the bit about the bit with the lemon got me. The bit with the lemon. Yeah, I is... love the lemon was great. Yeah. By the way, did you guys watch it with the male actors? Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. Good. So did I. Yeah. Um, I watched a bit of the female. Male was better. Male was actually like just legitimately better this time. Yeah. So. No, the Yakuza dudes, they're, they're, they're rolling those R's so well. Makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, but I don't I love, know. Lo like, lots of it, lots of the sillier bits, I'm sitting there like, is this a reference to something? Because otherwise it just looks lol random for the sake of lol random. Like, yeah. the fact that the, that the gangsters are bamboo. Maybe that's some really clever thing. It is. Context. It was, it's, it's a reference to the, uh, it's a reference to um, the actors that played them in the film. And are, are, are the name of their group and the fact that it is the same word as bamboo. Mm. That that's the yep. translation called them the bamboozle gang. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's that's cute and everything, but I don't know the fact that it needs to be exp like that's that's the thing. I'm not trying to say this is not a good show, but the fact that it needs to be explained to me means that I'm kind of not enjoying it. There, there with, are with some exceptions, just not many of them this week. <laughs> yeah. I, like, look, if I had to be honest with you, this was my least favorite week of Pop Team Epic. Uh, this is the first time I literally came away 
with like maybe a handful of things I actually laughed at, but I had you had to remind me of the lemon part. Mm -hmm. The lemon part was super good. Like that's I was great. like, okay, that's mm -hmm. like the what what a fantastic combination of everything involved there. But that was the only scene in that whole segment. Papako dies. <laughs> The okay, fact that the coffin is like five times bigger than her. Okay, Pop Papako dies is also pretty good, but that's... I, I, there's a lot. I like the little that's edgelord fine. keychain. That was a good bit, but only in, in the segment. Whichever one was first this week, I think with the female voice actors. Oh, is it different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, in, in that segment, it's just, just a slight difference. But uh, when, so she holds up this little, <clears throat> one of them gives the other this <clears throat> little like, snake cross thing and it's like oh this is just one of those edge lord things you see in gift shops and then it like starts glowing and talking to her i am lord calamity are you my new master and then in the male version she says oh it's an actual magical item in the female version only the slightest difference she says oh it's an actual magical item i'm so sorry <laughs> and just that little extra bit like uh -huh. got a chuckle out of me Nice. Yeah. See, it's kind of funny because I think it's you're really supposed to see that fir uh, part first, and it, there's a there's a legitimate difference in that um, when she says like, "Oh, I'm surprised. It's actually a legitimate magical item." Okay. <laughs> um, and it, yeah, in the second one, he yells it out like, "Yo, it's an actual item!" And it tries to it tries to tell him it again. He's like, "Look at it!" <laughs> and yeah, I think you're supposed to kind of see them as kind of like this difference. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and it it might be a translation thing, like subtle wording differences like that. I'm always reluctant to to hold against the show too much because maybe if I knew Japanese and was experiencing the humor the way it's intended, then it would have been hilarious both ways. Uh, yeah. Uh, Although, again, this week's very specifically, I feel like the actors that they got, especially is specifically for the male version, dictated are that they use the uh that that they use that one parody because mm -hmm. they're perfect in that scene. Oh, like, they're great. Yeah, they're so they're from Kaiji. They're yeah. actors from Kaiji. Having them be in, the, in a yakuza flick was perfect. Oh, yeah, it was great. Yeah. So their perfor their performances really carried that for me. It, it was hearing it was hearing a lot of the delivery that does a lot for me. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll be I'll, like I got to be on mm -hmm. your side there. Well, I didn't laugh at it. Their performances are kind of enrapturing mm -hmm. because I just love those actors. Yeah. Playing up this yakuza yeah. angle with these two cute girls, like ostensibly cute little girls. Yeah. So. Stay, stay, <laughs> stay. Yeah, that was cute. I don't I don't know this. I put this in the same category as Junji Ito or or as Hakame and Makochi, really, that it it gives me some stuff that is so good, mm -hmm. along with so much stuff that I just kind of have to sit through because it's not doing anything for me. If it were if it were just for my personal enjoyment, I would wait for social media to deliver mm -hmm. the good parts to me. So I mean, I gotta hold up this knife. Uh, for me. This was the first episode which I could give a knife to if I were so inclined. Mm -hmm. However, I'm still eager to see the next episode. That being said, if I get another episode like this one mm -hmm. for me, that'll be a knife. Yeah. But like I've liked the show enough to where it it's earned this it's earned this fuck from me to see it into next week. I'm just hoping that next week I find something there. Otherwise, this is gonna be a different card. That's how it is. I feel like a broken record with this, but it you only have to watch 10 minutes of it. You don't have to watch both parts. That's why I think it's so much stronger than a few other things that are so hit and miss for me. Because at least I have just, it's only half the time that I wasted if I didn't like it. Uh, yeah. There's, there's, there's just, it's just go in there. Am I going to have fun? I usually go in predisposed to have a smile on my face. It has to do something horrible to make me not enjoy it. Um, so take that what you will. If you know what you're getting into, I think it's still fun. So th this is kind of a weird episode to end because we don't know yet uh, what's going to happen. Uh, either Junji Ito is going to die yeah. or it's going to go to a poll. Uh, well, I, I agree. That is, that is the right way to handle it because it would feel bad to throw, to throw I, Hakame and Makochi to the potential of dying without mm -hmm. Kieran getting a chance to weigh in on it. That I'm, so I'm, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> hey, I it happens. Um, however... Since we don't know what's going to die, right now, but we will by the time I'm like oh, so. Okay. Yeah. When are uh, so the poll is going to go up tonight then? Um, 
Well, the poll. Oh yeah, how's that going? Well, yeah, we don't we don't post oh, yeah, the we poll until this goes up. We won't know until next week, on. so yeah. we won't tell no, know until next week what dies. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's happened once before. We had a poll last mm -hmm. season, so. Yep. Okay then. So yeah, I mean, okay. I'd, so yeah, no matter what happens, we're not going to know until until next time. Until next time. We're going to have to live with the uncertainty. I mean, one of us might die before next week. Live with that uncertainty. Yeah. I'm going to get on a plane. I don't know. People get murdered on planes every day. They do. I'm yeah. going to get in my car. People get murdered in cars every day. Yep. I People get also get laid on both planes and cars every day. So we might we might be real happy next week. I've only done one of those. I need to do the other. Mm -hmm. Now, which one? It was a car. Yeah. I, I assumed. Like, if, if that's something like that's, that you... That's got to be hard in a plane. Yeah, how do you get out of the... It's not getting in there that's the problem. No. No, it's getting out. Because if anybody is standing there waiting to get in, they're yeah. going to know what you did. Yep, they're going to know. I, I think it's just a matter of how much do you care. Like, how much exhibitionist do you have in your life? <laughs> mm. I mean, that's true. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for Anime <laughs> FMK. We'll see you next week, folks. Uh, yeah, but we got to say goodbye to the YouTube people first. Bye, YouTube. Bye, YouTubes. <laughs> Watch it on Twitch. It's fun. Yep. It's real good. What time? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you should know. <laughs> we'll see you next time.